guy's name? Um, uh, what is that guy's name? Mr. Rogers. Good morning, kids. Welcome to the sharpening show. <laughs> oh no, welcome to the neighborhood. We're gonna talk about sharpening knives. That's my white voice, I eh? mean, huh? You never know I could talk white, huh? Okay. We are going to talk about, let's see. So, what people don't understand about sharpening, it's what's happening up to the edge of the blade. So if your edge of your blade is thick, and let's say it right here, this section, this section in between is thick, then you end up with a blunt sharpening surface. So what happens is, Let's say this is your edge and you're here and this is your edge of the blade. When it's blunt like this, it will shave your hairs on your arm. It will do many things, but it won't be a good edge. What people need to realize is pulling it, but it will be tough, you know? That's why people do it like that, right? You could probably cut a bolt with that edge, but that's not what a knife is. We're not here to cut bolts with a knife. And so what you wanna do is really pull down an edge that's almost, you know, so it's very fine and very refined. And then, then you can test it. You can take the knife, you can hit it on stuff. And you know what, if it starts to react to it, then it's too thin, then you pull that edge back toughen it up, find the medium balance. But when you have something that's getting cut like this and getting hit with that, it's easily splits apart and comes back. When you hit something blunt, it has no pass-through geometry. And pass-through geometry is what we're looking for. What people don't understand is all the cut videos that I do, it's not really so based on that. I got it so much sharper than anybody else. It's the pass through geometry, really pulling down to an edge. So, that's geometry 101, is not stopping grinding while your unfinished edge is so thick. Because you also have to remember, as you're sharpening it, you're losing some thinness and actually it's going to thicken up you're actually losing a little bit of blade when you sharpen so now it's even going to come up and it's even going to be even thicker so now first thing we're going to do is we're going to i'm going to show you how to do two things we're going to do two things belt sharpen and we're going to do stone sharpen full disclaimer i do not know what the f i'm doing as far as technical aspects I've just picked up things from here and there and I'm doing what's right for me. If you do it differently, cool, I don't care. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is just what works for me. So there is better sharpening videos out there? Probably, <laughs> but that's how I do it. Let's go. So, what are we filming? This is a, what brand is this? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this one, Amera Braid. No, th so this grinder is Amera Braid. It's a two by 72, um, but what? you can sharpen on anything. So. One of my rules with sharpening is I always use an old belt. I never use one real fresh belt. That's just the way, I don't know, me and the way I was taught, you know? And then, so I use an old belt. This is an old 220. Um, this is just, I didn't plan this well. This is like a reject knife that didn't make it. So I dulled it this morning. It doesn't cut. You know, it's dull. So, I'm gonna get 
So this is a Combat Abrasives uh, 220 J-Flex belt. And if you need it to con contour, like if you have a recurve blade, then what you're gonna wanna do is just take the guide out and so that it flexes around. You're gonna, and the, but you just apply the same principles So we're gonna clean this belt off so there's no like rubbish in there or anything. Now, the key to this, I mean, this machine goes backwards and forwards. And so you can kinda, you know, you can go like that and go backwards and forwards. I'm gonna just do it in a standard position that, uh, that you can do it uh, so anyone can do it. But, so you can do it like this. So what we're gonna do is I don't like going straight to here. I don't like going straight to here because this is flexible and it can put a whoop in your blade. And so I like getting the same consistent feel by using a hard platen to start sharpening first. And then once I feel an edge breaking, then I switch up to here. But as you're removing material, if it's thick and thin, thick and thin, then you'll get the whoop and then come up and whoop and come down, okay? So I'm gonna run this machine. I'm gonna run this machine backwards. And uh, this is about the speed I run it at. It's a one, you know, it's super slow. And then I use this finger as a jig and I give myself about that much spacing. I don't have like a measuring device. The problem that I find when you use a jig to sharpen is then you get something that's out of the ordinary and then you can't sharpen it. So if you freehand sharpen constantly, you can sharpen anything. If you gotta clamp it into a jig and you gotta do the f***ing, what is, <laughs> what is that f***ing jig that you clamp to your table? Like what happens when you have to do an inside recurve and all these different things. If you're a professional knife maker, like take the time to learn how to freehand sharpen things because then you will pay off. Like, you know, you have to do it live in front of people, whatever. You cannot be like, oh, I kind of sharpen them. I need my little jig, you know what I mean? Okay, so go. And you always stop right in the center of the blade. I mean, uh, <laughs> you always stop in the center of the belt. And the reason why you stop in the center of the belt is because if you run it off, you blow your tip off, right? And we all know we need one tip, you know what I mean? Hold on, what the f is going on? Okay. So like, when as you're going, you, you stop in the middle. Because if you run it off, then it rounds that tip off. So now we go to the other side, put the same spacing. Boom. Okay. Do this a couple times. You don't need to run the belt fast because that's how you can kind of get into a, you know, a situation. And you want to always make sure that you're even all the way up to the tip. Once again, stop in the middle. Make sure your tip is even. Okay, so now I'm starting to build an edge. Okay, so now. One, two more times. Okay. You can do it if your machine only goes this way. If your machine only goes this way, you can do it this way like this. You can do the same thing. I like sharpening up. I, it's just because I, I don't know, whatever. I've always sharpened like that. Okay, so now you got your belt spinning this way. So now what you wanna do is you start 
close to here, not on this wheel, but close to here because this is where it's nice and flat. And so you start right there above the wheel and you're pulling your same angle and you're doing the same thing. Okay. So now what you're looking for is you wanna look directly at this edge. And what you're trying to wait for is edge development where you start seeing a little wire that builds up on the edge. And the same principle applies. You don't wanna um, run the edge off. You want to run the edge to the center of the belt line. So now you can slowly start seeing that edge develop, that wire. And then what you want to do is when you feel it, what you want to do is run your hands here and you want to run your hand up this way to see if the wire is developing, okay? So the wire is right here, it's nowhere else, okay? Okay, so as I'm getting closer, I'm gonna switch to a uh, belt. So now I'm going to switch to a 320 belt. Before that edge develops, you don't want to develop too big of an edge. You don't want to develop too much of an edge. Okay, so right there, we'll crack this thing one more time. Keep an eye on that wire. Okay, you see that wire developing? Can you see it, Dan? So now watch, when I put it on here, you can see, watch. You can see it pull up. Huh? And you're looking for a real even wire. So you see that wire building? Okay, now switch to in 400. And, and take in mind that this knife was fully sharpened and I had to dull it so it's a little thicker than what I normally have. Like I would typically re-grind this knife because I had to grind the cutting edge off. So this knife is a little thicker than what I normally have, but it's okay, well, this is just for demo cause. Okay, so now we're at 400. And that wire is really developed and refined. So now you can feel it real even. It almost snags your finger. And then when you come this side. Now that wire is on this side. Okay. So we just kind of smooth out that cutting edge. Check it. 
and then kind of knock that wire off a little bit and then touch it again okay So now what you want to do is take that wire edge off. So what was happening is the knife was going like this, sharp and then sharp and then sharp and then sharp. So now once you bust that little wire off, then you have a razor edge underneath and that's what we're looking for. And so now the leather strop with green compound, this is the natural veg tan on the inside is a great way to strop off that wire and you want to go and you want to feel see if that wire broke off you don't it's not so much like this you know what I mean it's more so like this way feeling it if that wire is broken off and then you can go through the smooth side of the leather and yeah, that's another way to like really feel if you have any more burrs on there and then then what I like to do is like kind of like oh to make sure check and this is the same piece of paper It's sharp. And it's a different kind of sharp because it's a belt, y'all. Yeah? Like a thick knife like this. It's thick. I mean, look how thick this knife is. And it's a reject knife. But even when you have a really good edge like that, it can just, you know what I mean? What'd that take us? 15, 20 minutes. That wasn't 15, 20 minutes. Uh, so, it's sharp. I mean, my f is razor sharp. Those belts. I mean, I can do that in like five minutes. It's good. Lasts a long time. That's belt sharpening 101, right, Ashley? Okay. So this is the knife I just finished that needs to be sharp. So it's brute to forge, forge it thin, forge it with a distal taper so that the brute to forge goes down, grinded it, hand sanded it. So this is, ground to not sharpen so it's not sharp yet but going back to what we were talking about in edge thickness especially for a chef knife uh, is extremely important you want to take it down to where you feel it's tough enough but cuts at the performance so like here's the caliper right here we're gonna check the uh the edge and so we're right at ten thousandths of an inch right that's what we're looking for right um, you know they're right there ten thousands okay so I bring mine to about 10,000 inch, so that feels almost sharp to the touch. Because you have to remember now when we stone sharpen it, it's going to pull it. When you create that wire, it pulled it back a little. And so what's happening is on a chef knife, that makes a huge difference. The more you go up the blade, the thicker it is. And so I find that this thickness where it's, you know, it's not like sharp, sharp, but I mean, you can cut stuff with it. And it's not even sharpened yet because the great geometry is there. And so we're gonna stone sharpen it. For me, 
I'm super dumb and so like I have a really hard time. Uh, I mean, I don't know whether it's just me or not, but I always tape off my knives. One, so I don't get that, the, there's, there's like stone grit in the stone, like there's, it's like gritty. So my, I'm rubbing my fingers on it and stuff like that. I kind of create scratches. And so this knife is not a personal knife. This knife is going out to be sold. So I don't want to put like weird finger scratches in it. So I just tape mine off just to be careful. It looks weird, but you know, better safe than sorry. Right, Ashley? Yes. <laughs> Ashley is packaging up knives. So when you see a knife, when you get a knife from me, it was carefully packaged up by Ashley. And if it's a bad job, it wasn't me. It was Ashley. <laughs> So back when I used to package my own knives, bro, I used to just literally like wrap them up in paper and throw them in a box and mail it to people. People used to be like super wigged out. So now, look at how professional I am now, right? We still ghetto as f I mean, we shrink wrap. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I thought I bought a Neo Kamimura knife, not one f***ing Spam Musubi. <laughs> the f Somebody ran over my Spam Musubi, bro. Hey, you can take, bro, you can't ever get Hawaii out of here. We wrap everything in f***ing shrink wrap, bro. What? Spam Musubi. Chicken fried chicken plate, it's all good, all the same, bro. Okay, right there. So I get my pawn. I get my thing. Okay. This was, I got this from Hap. This is uh, like their first version of the Nano Hone. I get one baller one, but I don't like get them all dirty. Let me see if I get them. Oh, the rats would chew all my shit in here. <laughs> bro, look at the rats would eat my shirt, bro. Okay, never mind. Okay, so look. So, oh. Sorry, bro. The rat doodle -doo inside. I'm gonna clean up the rat doodle. -doo. <laughs> So, <laughs> okay, so this is my signature one, the T Kamimura, and it comes with the um, sharpening pawn made in the USA, and then the thing go inside like this, and then it doesn't move, and it has the rubber for friction. It's my nice one. I don't like get them dirty, because, I don't know, whatever. But either way, it's covered in rat shit. Okay, on to my busted one. Okay, so, you ready? We rolling? Talking about my girl problems? <laughs> I feel bad for you, son. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> Get myself in trouble. What? Okay, so this is one regular spray bottle. I put one piece of paper towel underneath here so it don't slide so much. My other one has the locking thing, but I don't know, I just like this one because I don't want to get it dirty. So this is one thing that I do is this is the, um, the spray bottle I'm going to use. And so what I do is I just put like, just like a little bit baking soda inside there. And what that does is, oh Dane, hey Dane, stop trying to sniff on me, f so what? <laughs> it's baking soda. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so what? Ashley, 
It's fucking baking soda. It's not your kind. Bum bum. <laughs> oh darn. Oh darn. Ready. It's almost ready. What What does that mean when 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 somebody come up to you in a bar in Hawaii? What you like party? What you like party? Yeah. Huh? Okay. So back to why I put the uh baking soda inside this water is it neutralizes it a little bit i don't know the science behind of it but baking soda like neutralizes the water so that it doesn't uh it doesn't flash rust stuff i used to use it for auto body when we're like daing shit and then you get one uh you know you get bondo or no what do they call in the mainland body filler and then you get exposed metals and you gotta wet them you just put baking soda inside and it neutralizes it so i use the same practice from when i used to build cars to how i build knives so okay so this is a a diamond stone that is 50 <laughs> I, don't know what that, I don't know 50 pm i don't know whatever but it's good for breaking the edge on a fresh knife that hasn't been broke yet. Make sure your hands are dry. We're gonna grab this knife right here. And then, so for me, I do the same thing. I figure out my spacings with my finger and I just drag my finger on the ground like this. So go one, two, three, four. And then I move them. And I get that tip. And I'm not somebody that, oh, bro, where'd he go on burr? Okay. So I'm not that person that, I'm not gonna stay this same, this same thickness all the way down. It's gonna move and it's gonna curve. I want the edge to be tougher towards the end because it's thicker. So you see me roll up a little bit. It's an organic sharpened edge. Like it doesn't have the same pitch to it. So it's a little tougher on the front, a little sharper here, a little tougher in the back. I move it around a little bit. Um, and also because the knife is flexible a little bit. So you gotta like, so boom, we're gonna check. I already have a burr here, 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 and here. So right, just right here, I need one. So now we're gonna switch. So what was that one pass yeah one pass boom so one okay now i get a burr all the way down i don't know if you can see it or not but you see that burr all the way down the edge you see it's even holding water the burr is so prominent right huh can you see it see that burr a little better okay either way you can feel the burr it's there i've created a burr which is that little microscopic wire. This one you can feel a mean. Okay, so now because this is an unsharpened knife, it's never been sharpened, we are starting pretty aggressive, yeah? So now we're gonna jump up. So all of my sharpening system is nano hone. I've been buddies with Hap, he makes a good product. Um, so this is the Nano Hone 200. And the most important thing, like, so if your knife was already sharpened, right, and it's just a little bit dull, you wanna just stay up at the thousand grit, but I'm working my way from scratch. So that's why we're going through all these runs. Most important thing about a stone is flattening it. So this is one of the Nano Hone flatteners and you wanna, Make sure your stone is nice and flat. Take off all this shit. Shoot the camera. Okay. Then we're gonna do the same thing. Make 
make sure you get the tip don't forget about the tip and because we're going so aggressive i don't need a lot of passes on this Because at 200, it's actually removing. So we don't want to remove too much. Okay, now we're going to go to the 400. Same thing. I got two flatteners. I got this diamond flattener, which is less aggressive. But you see how I get one whoop right there? So we're going to take the big aggressive one. Get rid of that whoop in there. Make sure it's nice and flat. Okay, so now we're gonna go. And some people, they switch hands, left hand to right hand. I don't switch left hand to right hand. I, I don't know, I'd always the knife is in my right hand. But some people switch and they go like this and they go like this. I don't, I just stay with the right hand and I just flip like this. And I don't do the swirl like Morocco. You see what I mean? Like to move his hips, huh? Not me. I Asian, I look and dance. <laughs> I cannot do a kung fu. <laughs> what's that? The, what's that fucking movie with Chris, uh, Chris Tucker and, and Jackie Chan? Rush hour. Rush hour. He's trying to dance. He's trying to do his thing, but then he busts out his kung fu moves. Huh? Wow! Good God, y'all! What is it? Good? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Say it again, y'all. Okay, so then as we do one side like this, then we do the middle, applying pressure, and then tip. So what happens is you see some guys and they're like this, all their fingers is spread out because they wanna do one long pass. I don't like doing a one, that, that pass like that because it's just not super consistent for me. So I just put my pressure right where the stone is. And then when I move, I put it right where the stone is and then I move. So instead of spreading them out like this, but what happens if you don't apply pressure to where it is, the knife can flex and then you're just catching the edges of the stone. So that's why you always wanna be. Okay, so then we're gonna come this side, same thing. And you can tell by the water, watch when I come back. And then I come forward, you can tell it's even, right? So like if you, I'm not lifting or anything like that. So when, I, when I'm going, I know that I'm running the edge because I'm consistently pushing that water forward. Okay. And then, so now at this 400, I'm gonna take the tip and so I don't miss it because sometimes you miss it. And then I do one long strop. And I'll do the same thing. Make sure I pull the tip evenly. And then I'll do one long strop. Because if you just do like this, so if I just go like this, go like this, right? I'm not really getting the tip really well, right? So I don't forget about that. I pull the tip and then I pull. And so now we're just back stropping the blade Make sure we get a majority of that wire off. I don't know, but this much. <laughs> like this much of my thumb? I don't know. It depends. You just don't want it too steep. So the, the steeper you get, like, so if I was like this, it would come sharp, but it wouldn't have great cutting power. It would be tough. The more you lay this shit down, the less tough it becomes. So it can get dramatically sharper laying the blade almost down and it will be razor, like mind boggling. But then it has a tendency to chip and roll over because there isn't once again, when you're looking at this thing like this, there's no beef behind the blade. It just gets longer and thinner and thinner and there's no beef or meat behind of it. So it just burp, it just crinkles over like tin foil. So when you have some muscle behind of it, 
and then a very gentle transition, then bro, you can get toughness, sharpness. And so that's just what I have found to work for me. So then I get one cork right here and then I kind of run it through the cork a little bit. It can be a cork, it can be a two by four, you can do them right on the table, it don't matter, you know what I mean? Just kind of knocking that wire off. And I'm gonna go back to strapping this blade. Next up, thousand grit. Same thing. So these are all soaking in water, yeah? So, gotta soak them a little bit before you use them. Same thing. Prep your stone, flatten it. Look at that, clean. Okay, same thing. And it's not like, you know, I've been sharpening on a stone my entire life. Only like, what, year and a half, two years have I been stone sharpening? But to me, the reason why I like to stone sharpen chef knives is it have, I have the ability to trust the fact that I can go super thin and it's within my control to sharpen it. When it's on a machine and a belt, one little bump, and then, cause you're doing a bunch of strokes at once, you know, and like, and then the other fact is, is that it's, it's long, right? So, oh, you see me just spit when I want to talk. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so the other thing is that it's long, right? So it's not going to put a whoop, like a belt is only this wide, right? So you can kind of fucking rrr, rrr, and then your blade is all wobbly. And then when you go to cut one green onion, bap, the thing don't cut. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to... You're gonna try and you're gonna try and cut something and you're gonna have a whoop right at the heel because that's how the belt started it. You can rely on the fact stone sharpening chef knives, you'll get a true edge. You can get a true edge on a belt just if you don't fuck up, but you know what I mean? So I like the stone sharpening because it's its own art. And a lot of people find it uh what's the word? Um therapeutic. You know what I mean? Because you're just like, you know, you're you're doing something that, you know, it's it's a, it's an old world, you know. You're, you're, and I always like saying, you know, I forge knives with fire, not forging fire, <laughs> but I forge knives with fire and an anvil and a hammer, and then I sharpen that motherfucker on a stone. It doesn't get any more caveman than that shit. You know what I mean? Like old school, son. And I mean, I think it's really important. So. Where we're at the thousand grit right now, this is where you would be at with a chef knife that, you know, was just a little bit dull. So you're gonna wanna do the same thing. So your chef knife's dull. You're not exactly looking for a burr this per se, because it's already kind of sharp. So you, it, it would be a very light burr. So you just give it some even strokes, stroke, stroke, and then you just pull. And if you're concerned about this motion and your degree of angle and you have a stone just drag it you can't f it up by dragging it you can just drag the knife and it will eventually get sharp it won't be as fast and it's hold on gum out um so like even if you're a little high at one time and a little low at one time, it's like kind of convexing the blade, but you can't ruin the blade if you're just dragging the edge back and forth like this, look. So if you just drag the edge like this, you can't fuck your chef knife up. Thousand grit, it may take a little bit longer than usual, you know, but can't go wrong. Nice and tough and sharp. But for me, to get it done and you don't you don't need a tremendous amount of pressure um, you just need consistent pressure let the stone do the work and that's why another reason for another reason for flattening your stone and cleaning your stone you see all this black shit that's in there like it will pack in, pack in, pack in, and then all of a sudden your knife is running on old metal. And so when you take it and you clean all that old metal out of it, now you have a fresh stone. So you don't need to push super hard, you know? You don't need to push super hard. Just let the stone do the work.
Okay. I think the first guy that gave me one stone sharpening lesson was Luis. Is a friend of Mareko Mamasi, he's a chef knife maker. And uh, he gave me my first lesson. He told me, oh, I would like the nano hones, but they're kind of expensive. So I was like, oh, cause that's the one I want. <laughs> it's a great product and HAP is awesome. And you know, we've been working together for a while now. And I think this is the uh, same stone that Murray Carter uses. I think HAP and Murray Carter. And, Mary Carter can definitely get something sharp. Okay. Okay, so getting there, pretty, pretty sharp. Burr's pretty much gone. But the thing is, is that what we're really trying to figure out is that it's consistently sharp. Because a lot of people, they get the knife sharp only right here, you know? And then the heel is lacking. And then, and then, and then how many times I see like new knife makers they bust out, they bust out one one knife that they've sold, and then you look at it, and then you're like, oh, oh, oh. So a good way to check, and I don't recommend this unless you're a professional, but you can feel it on your nail, and then if it slides off, oh, that thing just cut my nail. Look, um, you know, never mind. Let's not promote that as a thing. But, anyways, that's the old school. Is check them on the nail, bro. If the thing bite, look at that. Cut the fucking paper towel, okay? So the thing is sharp. Okay, boom, that's done. So now I take the thousand grit right here and I put it on the side and then I get one 3,000. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean the 3,000 up Whack this off. Okay, and what we're gonna do is, this is basically my strop. This is like my leather strop. So we're gonna strop like this. Real lightly. Make sure the edge is polished. And then, just a couple ones. And uh, at this point, at this point, now it depends where I go from here is where it changes. So like if this is gonna be a sashimi fish knife for sashimi grade quality ahi, then we're gonna go all the way up to 10K and it will leave no lines when it cuts, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's sharper. So when you have a 10K or a 6K polished knife, it's slide, it can have a tendency to slide on skinned vegetables. And so what you want is an, a slightly uh, so if this is going to be a vegetable knife or basically an all-around knife and so what I do is I take it up to 3k and then what I do is I put the 3k back and then I put the thousand back on it give it a little clean and then I just do a couple swipes on it and put that 1000 grit serration back into the blade and so now this is going to bite it's not gonna slip because sometimes you ever have a sharp knife and the thing slip on a skin vegetable is because it's too polished. So this is gonna give you a little bit of micro serration to bite the skin like a bell pepper and cut them around and grab some meat and cut the fat. You ever have a really sharp knife and but it won't cut fat? It's because it's sliding. And so that's what we want to do is like put some put some sh uh, mini uh, serrations in there. Yeah, awesome. yeah, but now like, and sometimes if you're like, for me, like when I'm doing a skinning knife or a hunting knife, I leave that thing at 220 because it's really micro serrated and it can cut through hair, it can cut through skin and, and uh, uh, tendons and different things. But like as a standard chef knife, I like to go up to three and then come back down and do a couple final drops in a thousand clean off all the burrs, make sure things there. Yeah. And so what the 3000 is gets all like the kind of rubbish off of it. And then it's very clean to get a, a straight, uh, 
uh, straight. So now we're gonna go back to this. Light strops to knock off anything else that's on there. Okay, so now take off this tape. Our protective coating. <laughs> oh, auto body. Oh, masking tape is expensive, boo. <laughs> Not as expensive as my knife. Okay. We're gonna use some of Ashley's paper towel that she would put all over the place. A safe way to clean a knife is, wait, what is this inside? Safe way to clean a chef knife is to lay it down flat on paper and put tension on top of the uh, edge so that you can't slice your hand this way. You know, you put it this way. Okay, so I'm gonna take one piece of paper like this and it's not all about just like, you know, like slashing, like, oh, it's so sharp, ooh. That don't mean shit, like, it was speed that cut it, right? So what you wanna do is hold the piece of paper and you wanna bite the blade here, 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 Okay, so it bites the paper in every aspect of the knife and now you can do your fucking fancy right, cuts, right? It's sharp, right? But now you do a slow-mo version. So now you can tell if anything is on this blade, you'll feel it pop, the paper will talk to you, you know? So now you can tell if you didn't strop it anywhere good, you know? So it's good, it's sharp, you know what I mean? So, like, and then there's also like, people always talk about like, why do I use paper to cut? Is because paper don't lie, you know what I mean? Food, food is easy to cut. Paper has its own, like it has fiber in it, it bites. And this is somebody's chef knife and I'm gonna cook one dinner with it and then be like, oh, it's brand new, you know? Us. Come on, what? First try, what? People think this is only for Instagram. This is my life, cuz. <laughs> nah. Ashley's like, bitch, please. Bitch, please don't call my phone. <laughs> cuz I wanna be left alone. <laughs> okay, so it is proofed, it's sharp. It's ready to cut. So the point of that paper cut right there is because one, it's how smooth the edge is. And two, if it had that same bulky fucking edge, it wouldn't push through that paper effortlessly, right? So that's a geometry test more than a sharpness test. It's like shh, easy, one, boom, boom, you know? I mean, we can do all the tests you like for the, for the YouTube, right? You wanna do all the tests. Bro, you know how many trees went dive just for all these tests? No, I'm just kidding. Watch out, Ashley, when I cut your head. There's one. I'm gonna do a full frame. What, just give this bitch a little haircut? A little haircut. Oh! <laughs> okay, wait, wait. I was, uh, I, I was a little bit. Too, you see, you see me pull it. You see me pull it. Okay, okay, okay. Look, seriously, I did that on purpose, bro. I did it on purpose. There you go, bro. You see? Wait, wait. Let's. 
<laughs> Blue for real. No, leave that shit. Yeah. I want people to understand. Okay, yeah, now we'll give it a haircut. See, that thing went backwards. That thing's sharp. Okay. Thank you. Here you go. Okay, so with everything that we have now, so you understand now that like with an edge, if this is your knife's edge, the most important part is right here and it's geometry and how you pull that blade down into it. And people always think, oh, that's so thin. It's not. And if you worried about toughness, Pull it down to where you're uncomfortable and where it cuts great and then beat it on a antler, two by four, whatever you want. If you start seeing some deformation or chipping, pull it back a little bit, then go there, take measurements and understand that is where your heat treat is allowing you to be. But it's this part right here, right before the sharpening, because everything happens after that is pass through. So you can drop a knife through the thing, you can cut things, you can do everything. All those silly tests, those tests are silly, but if your knife's not right, it ain't gonna do the test. And so people are always like, why do you do the test? Why do you do the test? It's because every knife I test it because I want it to, you know, perform. Um, so that is knife sharpening 101. If you guys have any questions, do not ask it in the comment section because I'm not going to answer it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But in all seriousness, this YouTube channel is just me and one other guy. And we doing this and his name is Dane. He's Toy Monkey on Instagram. We doing this out of the kindness of our heart. Like this is not making us money. Last week we made 20 fucking bucks. Woohoo! Like we're doing this because we want to provide something like I was helped early on and um, people had helped me. So if I can help another young maker, like I'm not gonna answer 200 DMs on how to sharpen. I'm just gonna produce a video. <laughs> Dane's doing it because this is real shit. This is real world stuff. This is helping, this is making a difference. We just came out with a suicide and depression video that we was privileged to work with some SEALs with. Like we're, we're trying to make a difference, we're trying to do, do things. But to everybody that followed us, 100% appreciation. To anybody that watched the whole fucking video, mad love to you guys because I mean, we're busting our ass on this shit. Like, you don't see the fucking countless hours that Dane is editing. It's us too with basic fucking equipment on a little island in the middle of Pacific. And anybody that watches this shit is for the boys, for Hawaii. That's what we're about. That's what we're trying to do. I'm trying to bring knife making not only back to the US, but I'm trying to make mainstream knife making back to Hawaii. You know, and that's what's important to us. And Dane's trying to do his filming thing. And we're trying to film things that make sense to us, that motivate us, that inspire us. And so thank you. Yeah. Boom, motherfucker. What? We should do a bleed nice scratch it. So, brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Every time somebody's like, should, I'm like, Beep. <laughs> so let me tell you all for sharpening your knife okay you take the 36 grit belt right here this 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 knots one right here <laughs> take this one see this one give you good sharp remember what i was talking about micro serration it's so perfect no, i'm just kidding that's the cuts <laughs> take my picture take my picture for combat abrasives Oh, thanks for the free belts, brothers. <laughs> no, no. I mean, all joking aside, fucking combat abrasives. When everyone's like, why do you promote combat abrasives? Look at these motherfuckers right here. And the reason why I promote combat abrasives, not because they're the best. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just funny. I promote combat because, hey, I know the father, I know Garrett, the main dude, his son, and they picked me up when I had 3,000 followers. 
they joined me to the team at 3,000 followers. Now when I had 500, now when I had 100, they had 3,000 followers, they picked me up and they signed me to a team and they gave me free belts because they believed in me and what I was doing. And so for me, that means something to me and that means something to as far as loyalty goes, you know? And um, that's important to me. So the belts that we were using today were combat abrasives, J-Flex belts to sharpen. That's, I've used those belts always. Well, it's the only belts I use is always combat, but you know, they got the rubber eraser, they got, you know, all this shit. But you want some slow-mo shots of me changing my belts? Oh, yeah. Then we go cinematic. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm f***ing tired, bro. Oh, you're getting delirious? <laughs> getting delirious, bro. So let me give you a walkthrough with my grinding room. This grinder, this is a Maribraid standard kit, deluxe kit with the surface grinder on here. And then I got my drill press for wood. I got a little bullshit air compressor. And then this is my Maribraid master kit with all like the little things. They're normally not this rusty. The only reason why it's so rusty is because I live in Hawaii and you can see the ocean. This right here is a Jerry Moen uh, uh, serpentine platen grinder on top of the, uh, this is the AMK. This is the, it's a different, it's different than the regular AMK. I forget what it's called. It's Hope Kit Knives or something like that. I don't forget what it is, but this is both AMKs. Um, this is the knife grinder that I started out with from Dave. Well, I started out with a, um, without a grinder, but this was the first grinder that I purchased. I'll never, ever walk away from it. This is my first grinder. I'll always have it rebuilt. It'll always be in my shop. Um, I've put 500 knives through this f***ing grinder right here. And then uh, this is the AMK um, nine inch disc grinder. This is great. If you don't have one in your shop, Dude, get one. And don't be buying like all the little attachments that bolt on like, if you're a real knife maker, buy a dedicated machine and make the space. If you don't have space, then it's cool. You know what I mean? Get the thing that's universal and fits everything. But if you're a knife maker, get a dedicated machine. Get a dedicated buffer. De get a dedicated nine inch. I mean, I don't even mess with like anytime. That's why I have so many grinders. I don't even want to change belts. You know what I mean? Like time is the only thing that you cannot buy, right? So just get some real dedicated. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>